Hello, you two. Today, Shelby and I, we're at this beautiful park in Alpine, Texas. That Shelby in the bag, eating McDonald's. And um, I'm trying to get him out the van. I, I might take you guys for a tour of the park. Just do a, a little circle around the park with the camera so you can see. But it's a very nice park. And one thing I like about this park, they actually have trees for shade and not just decoration. In Presidio, Texas, I don't know what's going on with that little town, but I try to stay away from it. When we go to Presidio, Texas, we get our supplies and I try to get in and out of there as fast as possible. Because for one reason, I try to get out of Presidio before someone says something um, inappropriate to me or disrespectful. So that's one reason why I don't linger when we're in Presidio. And number two, it's just so hot there. Is the, the little town of Presidio is like in a hole or a bowl, some people would say. And it's just when you get down in that little bowl, or that hole, I, I call it, that little hole in the ground, it is so hot. I mean, it's like the, the wind stops, stop moving and the temperature is, goes up immediately 10 degrees. And we're only 12, our ranch is only, well, actually about, it's 12 miles north along the highway, but um, altogether, we're about 20 miles away from Presidio, Texas, um, our ranch is. And, but the temperature, the, the climate is such a major difference. You would think we were 60, 70 miles away, but we, we also live, we live in the desert, but we, we also live near mountains. We have mountains, a uh, mountains view all around us, um, and it's a. We have a lot of um, strong winds, strong mountain winds, and we have, um, and it's just cooler. It's it's cooler. I mean, even though it's the desert. Um, it's, it's a lot cooler than Presidio. And I believe every place in the world is cool, cooler than Presidio, um, Presidio, Texas. And um, and occasionally we, um, we would run into someone at the grocery store because that's basically where everyone has to end up some, at some point in time is at the grocery store. And I've talked to people from Arizona and sometimes we just have a friendly um, debate about um, which is hotter, Arizona or Texas. Now, I haven't spent much time in Arizona. I believe I traveled through there um, several times going somewhere else. But, um, you know, I just participated in the debate just for the fun of it. But um, Texas is hot, but... Presidio, Texas is specifically hot. And I guess it's because, um, I don't know really know why, but some people think it's because it's, it's down in that little bowl and, um, you know, where you descend into, so you, it's like a real low ground. So I don't really know um, the physics of it or why it's so hot there. I mean, so much more hot than surrounding areas as near as, um, 10 miles away you know if you can just get 10 miles away from Presidio you, you, you start cooling off and um, and then another thing about Presidio they don't accommodate for the heat as hot as it is there they, um, we have um, we have a park in Presidio with no shade so most of the people you know they don't even utilize the park until eight o'clock at night during the summertime and there's no public water fountain that I, I, I don't understand I mean I, I've been to parks that didn't have water fountains but they weren't as hot as Presidio so um so no shade no water fountains basically no wi-fi there, there was wi-fi a couple of months ago um at the visitor station that they have but now that's no longer um available don't ask me why i don't know 
and um mm-hmm. so yeah it's a lot of mm-hmm. questions that if, if i cared i you know i would wonder you know well why is our tax dollars being utilized this way i mean it's because it doesn't make sense you build a park but the, no shade you um you you have trees for decoration, but not trees to, to um, protect people from the sun, to shield um, people from the sun. So, um, like I say, I don't spend much time in Presidio because it's a little, you know, it, it doesn't even, you know, the, the way the people are there, you know, they got their own thing going on. It's like the American government doesn't even reach Presidio, Texas. They just do whatever they want there in Presidio. And, um, you know, to, so to, for me to avoid being harassed and having our vehicle sabotaged even more, you know, I just stay out of Presidio because like everyone there, they're either related to each other or they're um, very good friends with each other. Um, and this is like 80% of the population. And, um, and give you an example, like one mechanic will rip you off or one mechanic might do the do the correct work on your vehicle but then he'll send you to his cousin to um rip you off for twice as much as you would have spent and you know it had he had, hadn't done the work the first piece of work you know this is like the game they play then that's another reason why i don't spend much time in presidio because the games never stop you know the and then if you have friction with one person then you have to deal with the attitude of 20 30 40 other people so because that's that's how tight knit they are and they that's how many games they like to play they they all play the same games and tell the same lies and you know they have the same hustle going on and um so they try to do it in such a way where you don't you haven't figured it out of course you know they 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 hope for you never to figure it out because if once you figure it out then you just won't be doing no more business with them and um so they do it in such a way where you know you're giving them the benefit of the doubt but no a, a lot of things i figured out you know in Shepherd, and, and also they will stop you from obtaining government resources you know we have um well they have i guess i don't even consider myself actually a part of presidio um but um there there is a what you call it there there's government buildings you know there's a place for um disability where you can apply for medicaid and food stamps and things like that and um they have a place where community action where you can apply for um house not housing they have a program for housing as well but you can apply for um to have your house adapted for the um environment you know where they would in- insulate your house for you or they will um provide you with evaporated cooler things like that i forget the name of the program but um Shelby and I, we were being blocked from up, having our Medicaid updated for home resources. So we, so I wasn't. Long story short, I wasn't on state payroll, and um, we were living off of Shelby's disability, which at the time was seven hundred and thirty-five dollars a month. And we had just moved from Chicago, so we were just, um, you know, starting out. We hadn't even ordered our cabin yet. And um, they were preventing us from applying for um, home care where I would be put on payroll as Chevy's um, care provider. And so when we applied for the um, weatherization program, that's the name of it, when we applied for the weatherization program so we could have our cabin insulated, which I really didn't want our cabin insulated in the first place because I like the wood. The um, I like the open wood look that we have on the inside, and the um, but I did. I, I was hoping that we would at least get the evaporated cooler, and I even would have went for the installation, you know, if that was the best thing to do. But um, we didn't qualify, even though we were only had um, our income was only seven hundred thirty-five dollars a month. 
So this is like one of the, this is just one of many things, you know, that these people do, you know. Um, and then you, if you don't know how to um, take it to the next level, you, you know, write um, government, write letters to Congress um, or the governor, write letters to your local senator, you know, and you, you have to be savvy in this type of way. And a lot of people aren't. I happen to be, thank goodness, I happen to um, have the ability to find out who I can talk to to um, possibly get some results. But it's just a shame that, you know, that you have to go through this and, you know, on, on American soil and, um, you know, you have to go through all of these, these roadblocks that's not even put there by the government but, but put there by the locals because they like to play these little games because I you know I don't really know why they don't want newcomers in Presidio Texas but they don't but I would not if, if you were interested in buying some cheap property here and um, and there's lots of cheap property here in, in, in Presidio Texas or Southwest Texas and um, I would just come on get you some cheap property and um, you know, so you can be a landowner, so you're not a slave to um, other people, you know, living on other people's property or, you know, paying all those bills or being in debt um, your whole life or whatever the case may be. Come get you some cheap property and, um, you know, just never mind that, you know, just you know do it now it's better if you the more self-reliant you are the the more that um if you have mechanical skills now i've i'm much better than what i used to be i i, I do a lot of maintenance on our vehicles myself i even do some minor repairs our van is very um simple but um i still don't have the tools to do a, a you know major repairs but i know more about what's going on with the van where i can't just be robbed you know you can't just tell me anything now and you know just rob us blind when it comes to the van but also but yeah if you have some mechanical skills some carpentry skills um cooking yes you know i mean I had very minimal skills when we bought the property and we moved on our property here in, in um, Texas. But, um, you know, I'm a fast learner. And the more, um, the more the merrier, you know, if you come, I mean, see, being a single woman and being a minority, being the only black among Mexicans, that's um, put me at a disadvantage that you might not have to um, be at. But um, don't let that stop you, though. You know, if you come with God, and God will, you know, just do the best you can, and God will step in, and, and I'm a living witness to that. God will step in and help you when, when you need the help. And he will gear, gear you, he'll show you what people to avoid. Also, um, we got our cabin. I, I'm not a builder, you know, I built, um, I built a, and this was after a year or so of being on our ranch. I <laughs> built, but I guess you would call it some shelves for Shelby. Yeah, yeah. And I built. Um, so I just put some wood together so he can have some extra shelves for his um, toiletry in his little bathroom that um, we have for him in the cabin. And it's just as primitive, but I'm just as proud of it. But as soon as we get um, some extra money and I see something that I like to replace it, I'm definitely going to replace it. But we still probably use it for something else. It just it will probably be used in another um, building that we uh, we plan on purchasing, or or even outside. But um, it is very primitive because I have very little carpentry skills. But um, you know, it, it was fun. It was fun making it. It didn't cost me much. Um, I had a lot of the wood laying around from previous projects anyway, so it was very inexpensive, and it was fun. But you, yeah, you do. But if you have some carpentry, carpentry skills, but um, as far as having a place to live in that we can afford without 
buying, um, you know, paying um, engineers and contractors to actually build a house with um, stick and, sticks and bricks, as they say, or um, bricks, whatnot. We just ordered us a cabin. And um, because building it myself wasn't an option. And, and when it comes to building, you, you know, even if you do have a lot of skills, in the mountains with the strong mountain winds, it's probably better, and I think most people would agree, to have uh, more than one person building. You know, so you can have someone holding things and, you know, it just, I think it would be more, it would be safer. But um, nevertheless, um, we had the option of ha having the cabin ordered. And we ordered from Durkin's Portable Buildings. And you can order, they have like five or six different styles to choose from. You can order any size you want. You can order how many windows you want. You can order how many doors you want. We have a, a loft. We actually have two lofts in our cabin, front and rear. And the, um, and I, I think, believe I saw a YouTube video where Durkins is also um, framing some of the, their cabins or some of their buildings out, framing the inside where you can actually frame it into different sections, um, bedroom, kitchens, and um, bathrooms, and things like that. In our case, I believe the best way to go was just to have it open because it's, a, it's relatively a tiny cabin. It's, um, well, actually, it's 24 by, tw yeah, 24 feet by 12 feet, 12 feet wide, 24 feet long. And that's including the front porch, which I didn't know at the time. So we had to get really creative because um, 48 feet, 48 square feet, is the front porch so that's 48 square feet that we didn't have to work with on the inside so basically that took up the space that um we probably would have normally used for um a closet or a bathroom but by it just being open when we got the cabin it was just open we didn't have it framed out or anything and um that just gave us options more options because we didn't have designated space uh, if, you know ahead of time and um you, and you can be more creative when you just have an open space you know you instead of having a door or a wall there you can just use a curtain as a divider you can use um see-through petitions you know um you can just when you don't have a solid wall you can use a lot more different things that's not so restricting and um i like that I, I really we're getting to the part where we've been in our cabin um well actually we've been in presidio texas for two and a half years but we um you know they when they sabotaged our van they um we ended up staying in a shelter for about three months and before that when they kept us from applying for um home care resources with medicaid we ended up um staying in a, a apartment for about three months because it was just it was so hot it was too hot to live in the desert off of 735 dollars a month and so in the summertime but now and mind you don't let the summertime in texas scare you off because that's just the summertime the other seasons is very nice it's very nice but you just have to play it when, when summertime hits you have to play it smart but other than that um winter spring and fall it is very mild nice weather and winter is very nice it does get cold at night though here in texas so you do want to prepare for that. Shelby and I, we do um, use propane to heat the cabin at night during the winter. Um, I love the rainy season. I mean, you can't complain about the rain when you live in the desert. And since Shelby and I have been here in Texas, it has rained more in um, the desert than, you know, this, the past two years, it has rained more than it has in the past 10 years. So, um, I believe God is watching us, you know, um, 
Okay. Faith in God will not just help you endure, but it will help you excel as well. And you never know when God is doing, you know, his thing and how he's going about doing it. And I love solar. I know a lot of people, they downsize and they move off the grid. And um, some people elect not to have electricity. Um, I really, you know, um, I probably, without electricity, we probably would have did it anyway because I wanted to own our own property. I wanted to live on our own property. But I really wanted to um, come home to electricity. You know, um, some people, they charge their devices in their vehicles. So that's how they do that. And some people have generators. And a generator, um, that's fine. We use our generator um, sometimes about four hours um, when it's on cloudy days. Or when we we have we um, run the whole cabin off of electricity. So sometimes we give our batteries a rest and we use a generator. But I don't want to, I, I was, if, if I could pull it off, I didn't want to um, be restricted just using a generator. Because um, one thing you're paying for the gasoline constantly, solar is free. And I love, I just love having solar. It's, to me, um, we're not having an electricity bill. And I'm told by... I've been told by several people that um, the electric um, bill here in Southwest Texas is, is very high, which is a surprise to me because, um, you know, the cost of living is supposed to be so cheap and employment, employment is supposed to be so high. So where are they getting this money to pay, you know, these $300 a month electric bill, you know, and that's to run the air conditioner and things like that. But... Oh, I'm glad that we don't have to. We don't have an electric bill, and we get our, our. The way I see it, we get our energy straight from God, and um, I'm looking forward to now. This might be. Um, this is a prediction on my part. I'm looking forward to something similar happening with um, wireless phone. You know, one day we, I, I believe that in my lifetime, be I'm thinking I'm in a, maybe even in the next couple of years, there are going to be programs where, just like the solar, you instead of paying a monthly bill, you just make the initial purchase for your equipment and don't pay anything else. And I believe that's what's going to happen with the internet. You know, they're going to, somebody's going to um, put together a nice package um, where most people can afford. And um, you just buy the package, just like you would buy your solar equipment, you would buy your internet equipment, and you just have free internet for the life of the equipment. And so um, I believe that is coming. I believe that is um, coming very soon. It's probably already in the making. They just um, haven't got it out there to the public yet. But also, um, yeah, come off grid. The weather is not always so hot, very unbearably hot here in Texas. But when it's during the summertime, you know, take it easy. Don't be outside um, during the peak hours of the sun. You know, the people here, they have learned how to um, coordinate with the sun, and, and myself as well. You just coordinate with the sun when, um, you know, do things early in the morning, take a nap at, um, at the hottest parts of the day, stay cool, eat watermelon, eat um, cucumbers, um, salads, you know, eat things that's going to cool you off. You know, you, I mean, you can eat everything you want. But you don't want to heat your system up, you know. You don't want to be digesting um, meat all the time because that's going to um, keep your body temperature. Um, well, it's, it's going to be okay, but if you eat things like cucumber, watermelon, salads, um, tomatoes, and lettuce, keep things like that around and, you know, keep ice water around and... Um, you know, just stay cool. And but and, and remember, summertime only lasts um, 
with the month of uh, the season of summer what three months so you have three months where it's the hottest part of summer that's where you have to be careful but once you survive outside of that you know it started cooling off you had the fall which is so now you're being more comfortable and um you know everything is cooled down a little bit then you have winter winter here in texas is like very nice you know nice during the daytime but it can get even um freezing during the nighttime and then you have the spring which is very nice so um don't think of texas is being hot 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 all year round you know because it's not and um like i said yeah and another thing if you're going to come here and you're going to live off grid or if you're going to go to florida or if you're going to go to california they those are two of my other favorite places or two of my favorite places i believe um california is my favorite place if i must say I to be, and the reason for it is because I find the nicest people. I I've met the nicest people in California, and um, in Florida too. That's one reason why I kind of like Florida, even though I'm kind of afraid because Florida, um, in them hurricanes and being right on the tail end of America. <laughs> But um, as far as people go, um, Florida would be my second choice. California would be my first. And um, and believe it or not, I, New York gets a bad rap. New York, I, I've met some very nice people in New York. And the one thing I like about all of these places more than Southwest Texas is that the government runs these places. You know, you don't have to... Um, worry about being a victim of what the locals are doing because in new york the locals don't run things the government runs things so and you know you're protected in that way but the um the the people you meet are nice you know everybody is, is just an individual everybody is not um related to each other and you i mean you have some bad people you have some people trying to hustle you out of your money and everything but not everybody is is on that type of um you know it, it has that type of mind frame it's a lot i met a lot of nice people in um, new york and i also like the conveniences too but also coming to, once again back on the subject of like coming here and um living off the grid we have two of everything it's because you want to be self-reliant and that's the name of the game too because you you'd want to stop being a slave to um, paying someone else to live on their property. And here in America, let's face it, it's almost illegal to be homeless. You almost, you can't, you almost can't park anywhere and, and just go to sleep. Hotels are skyrocket. And um, you have to, you know, hotels cost anywhere from 125 to $275 a, a, a night. And that's for just a run-of-the-mill type of decent hotel. It's not like, I'm not talking about five-star or anything. But, um, yeah, you want to be independent, self-reliant, you know, get rid of most of them bills. You know, and another thing, um, and, and you know, it might take you a while to build up to this point. But have two of everything. And like in your household, like when you live in the city or suburbs in urban areas, you, you know, you, there's a store, you know, two blocks away. There's, there's a, a convenience store, grocery store, department store. There's all, you don't have to be well stocked because everything, you know, as soon as you run out of something, you just, um, you know, walk a couple of blocks and um, get what you need. But when you live in a rural area, rural air that's not the case and we live in the desert so we have like five miles of rough road before we even get to the highway so um we're not going we know you know we're not going to leave the ranch to pick up um some lemons you know, so um, we want to. You want to be well stocked. Our cabin is not fancy. It's very basic. It's very simple. But we we are st stocked to the rim with food, water. Um, you know, anyone that comes there, 
We have two guest bedrooms in the loft, and each we have one guest bedroom in each loft, the front and the rear. Even though we don't have any guests, but I had to do something with the space, so I turned them into bedrooms. And um, so you, you, we have place to sleep. We have um, there's food, and you know there's emergency food. There's working supply of food. There's reserve food there's same thing with water and you know it's, it's a place where you can be comfortable you know we have electricity we have um television now we don't have um regular tv stations but we do have well we have a large um collection of movies that we can watch whenever we want and um and we have the electricity to power the um the televisions so I mean, it's to, to us, it's it's pretty comfortable. It's, it's really comfortable. Um, we have a comfortable place to sleep. You know, we have um, we this year was it this year? Well, yeah, we, this year we paid off our bathhouse. We we purchased another cabin. But like I said earlier, that um, I wasn't aware that the front porch was included in the um, the measurements of the of our cabin when we purchased it. So um, when we were able to, we purchased another cabin to use as the bathhouse. And I had a lot of fun decorating that. I might do a video and, and upload that uh, with the bathhouse. That was a lot of fun. Uh, we love it. Before that, we were taking baths outside. We got 10 acres. Our nearest neighbor is like six miles away. So we were just taking baths outside and um, or bathing outside. Uh, only thing with that, um, you get, you know, it was fun at first. You know, I'm a camper, a camper, and it was fun at first. But um, you know, after a while, you get gets kind of tired. You get kind of tired of it. You got the flies. Somebody has to stand snake watch. You know, and so it's like, you know, it become. You know, I was like, I really would like to be able to. Um, you take a bath indoors and which inside the cabin even before we got the bathhouse we were able to bathe inside the cabin but it was always that um you know we had to be careful because um, we didn't have a lot of space for um bathing inside the cabin so you know we always wanted to make sure that you know the water wasn't getting everywhere and uh, where with the bathhouse um it's arranged just for bathing so you know you can just really take a good full bath without worrying about you know if the floor going to get wet and all, everything like that i think i'm gonna do a video about that but also being um self-reliant in a in a, a a rural area like we are you want to have two of everything you are you know you want to have like we have two generators now we actually got the generators um, the two generators by accident. Um, I was having a problem with the first generator because I didn't follow the instructions on how to properly turn it off. And then I couldn't get it back to working. So I ended up buying another generator. And then later on, I, I had, it took me almost a year to find someone to repair the, the first generator. So once we got it repaired, um, then we had two generators. So now we're going to, uh, we have one generator for each cabin. And so it just happened to work out that way. But if something should happen to one generator, we, the primary cabin is going to get the, you know, the generator, you know, the one that we actually live in. And so um, we can, so when you have two of everything, you can use your, um, your second piece of equipment you can use it, but if you need it, you can use it for, you know, your primary cabin. And we, you know, we have um, two power inverters. We, we have, um, you know, we just have multiple fans and things like it. So if one thing goes bad, you have a replacement. Why? Because like, see, when, or to say one of your generators go bad, you have to, you might have to wait two weeks to get it fixed. So while you're getting one fixed, you can still be using the other. And um, 
So yeah, and so and soon we we'll have two um, solar systems because we're we're buying a solar system for the um, bathhouse as well. So cause like to, for me, um, I only like using generators as a backup. I don't like for the generator to be the primary source of energy because it, you, um, it. I mean, it's not doesn't cost a lot to run, but if you you're on a tight budget, it could cost you quite a bit. You know, every, every little bit count, especially if you're on a tight budget. But um, but just to say, in general, it doesn't cost a lot to run your generator. But you just want, you know, it's noisy. So you want to, um, and I, I just like solar. So, you know, I just like this to use a generator as needed, but not as our prim primary source. I, I'm very much in love with our solar system. And, um... And you just want to have plenty of food and water stored. You want to um, invest in food that you can store long term. In fact, um, I, I watched this man's video about the, um, I believe it's Blue Mountain um, freeze dried food. And I believe it's similar to the food they use on Amtrak. Shelby and I, we love Amtrak. Um, I, I figured the food was processed some type of way. It had to be, you know, to feed that many people. Um, and, you know, fairly quickly, too. But um, I've heard some great reviews about, I believe it's called Blue Mountain. You can find them at the um, hardware store. I think some um, health food stores. Not health food stores. Hardware stores. In um, Walmart, places like that. So the um, but yeah, and this is stuff you might not plan on using, but you want to invest in things that don't go, that don't spoil. Um, get canned goods that you're gonna eat. Get the canned goods that you actually like. Don't just stock up on canned goods that you know you just happen to get your hands on that they were given out at the food pantry invest in things that you actually like because um if a disaster do hit someplace here in america where where you are and you and you experience a disastrous situation you at least want to be able to eat things that at least you like these things like um it's easy for me because i like sardines so Hot sauce and sardines is fine with me. Um, sardines and crackers, that's fine with me. Chevy likes sardines as well. So we stock up on sardines and we stock up on um, powdered milk. We stock up on powdered eggs. We stocked up um, on canned fruit. Um, Chevy requires a gluten-free diet, so we stock up on things that are gluten-free, gluten-free pancakes, gluten-free macaroni and cheese. And um, the more research I've done about gluten-free made me realize that I think I would rather have a gluten-free diet myself. But that's another video. I'm going to um, cut this one off. And it, thanks, thank you, Shelby. <laughs> See you later, YouTube.